take uh, from that discussion? What's your take from that discussion? My main take. Because I was gonna, I was gonna share you something else today. I don't know if I really had a, a take on it, considering it was. I mean, I think I gave my take in the video, so I don't think there's much more for me to say on it. But, but what was it you can? So I was gonna say, you know, like as a Muslim, I, um, mm. yeah, I believe in there is a God, and uh, and then often we come here to park to share the belief of Islam. And we believe this is a very compelling evidence. We have a lot of compelling evidences to believe in this message. Because look, all of the matter we believe is unseen matters. And unseen matters, how we conclude is through the evidences that we have and applying our uh, rational faculties. So we, we believe aql and naql, which is the reasoning and revelation to go hand in hand together. I'm not sure, have you come across this idea? There's a book I've read, it's called um, How the World Thinks. And it's about the sort of different schools of philosophy around the world. So, some parts of the world more than others, because some parts do a lot more yeah. writing than others. Yeah. But um, there's largely like the, the West, the Islamic world, <laughs> India and East Asia. Those are the four main ones. And it's a great civilization. What's the book called? How the World Thinks. Uh -huh. yeah, and so it talks about, for instance, like the, the how each society regards us as uh, having a basis for knowledge. And so in the Western tradition, knowledge is, and truth is largely obtained through a kind of analytical, logical uh, process of deduction and discussion. So Socrates, for instance, would you know go around asking people questions and to find out their principles. Then he asked questions about the principles to try and break it down and say, well, this and this therefore means that. Mm. And talked about how in, in, this, in the Islamic world, truth is, is primarily attained through divine revelation and reason is something that God grants us to fill in the blanks and to work out the details and to better comprehend it. Would you regard that as a correct? Uh, uh, so basically, Alfie, uh, partially correct, partially correct. So what we believe in aql and naql and the combination of the aql is something called reasoning. And in, in, ter in order to reason, we need to have those, uh, you know, sensory abilities, like sensory, the, the eyes, the ears, empirical. our... Em no, 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 empirical. You know, the sensory reasoning, you know, like you have um, eyes, you have ear, you think, reflect and making reason, right? So all those sensory uh, reasoning abilities that human being possess. So the first, the creator created with rationally, logically sound minded and given us an ability to use this intellectual things in day to day life. Look, for example, Alfie, when I came out from my home, I used jacket because my brain is telling me that it's cold outside. And then I looked at the temperature is also down so a, 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 you know it is too cold uh, out there not to have a jacket right so the idea in islamic tradition is your akal indicating a knuckle means i know in one point i will be limited i do not know my existential question through my limited ability and sensory reasoning so therefore my ability is telling me my, my reason telling me that I am not a, a product of nothingness, nor I am a self-creation. So therefore, there must be something. And then how did that something define itself? Then I need to know from the external sources. This is where my, uh, which is akal, indicating to the knuckle. And then when the knuckle comes, we need to verify, you know, the methodology you are mentioning. In Islam, we, in, in Islam, we have highly scrutinized field of how we assess our documents about, let's say, for example, Quran. So if someone say, how do you know uh, is authentic, right? So, so, so we have something in Islam that unlike anything we know in this current uh, world that uh, in terms of the preservation of the Quran, and we call it uh, the chain of narration. The chain of narration is goes like that, Alfi. Say, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he re received the uh, revelation from an angel and then he memorized it. And then God is making sure he memorized it correctly. And then he passing down to his companion. And then the companion also learned, memorized 
and then prophet asked them to recite it back then once prophet is happy with the process of memorization prophet said okay teach the next generation exactly the same way i taught you and this process of teaching of quran has till today available and we can find those people like if you if you go to a memorizer of the quran you can trace back his teacher to prophet muhammad all the way and those people in between who taught quran in between this line and that, that is called we call um isnad the chain of transmission mm. so this is one kind of um assurance for a believer that okay when my applying my knuckle like uh, akal my knuckle which is knuckle uh, through through revelation that this revelation is not just suddenly came from out of the blue rather it has a chain of narration and we can trace back there not only we know who they are we know their biography and and this biography has been recorded in ilm rijal the chain of man so and then uh, from that onwards we we know for the surety and it's a mutawatir mass transmission so it's not like one chain came from prophet to directly to saudi no all over the world the chain reached out and the quran has been passed down to transmission and then we say yes this is the methodology we applying in our islamic tradition to know that yes it is indeed from prophet muhammad so so the the, the idea i mean this type of type of um, checks are there for to make sure that we have authentically preserved the tradition and, and as i understand it uh, it says in the quran you know if, if you if you does it make whether, sense though does it yeah, make yeah, sense yeah it makes sense um and I, as i understand it, it says in the quran you know that if you question its its validity and its divine authenticity uh then you know try and find contradiction Correct, and yeah. try and find a sort of human work that is better so basically it talks about uh in chapter 4 verse 82 yeah allah saying uh, they find a contradiction basically i'm paraphrasing it afala yatadabbaruna alquran walaw kana min indi ghayri allah la wajaduhu fihi ikhtilafan kasira yeah so let me because i don't want to quote the mistranslation i've uh, recited from uh, arabic which is um, chapter 482 yeah because you know this is god words so, you know i don't yeah. want to misquote something you know yeah, that's, that's not, uh, that's and not, i'm, I'm not i'm not uh, i'm not very good at you know exact in um 84 yeah uh, 82 yeah okay yeah so i say do they not reflect on the quran had it been from anyone other than god they would have certainly found in in it many inconsistencies or contradictions so basically the challenge is there to show the authenticity of the quran because this is an objective way to someone can look into it as a person of intellect would say look i do not just take it from someone tom dick and harry i need to be sure of whether this message is indeed from god and then there are other challenges as well like uh, another challenges is uh, it's a different challenge it's like allah is asking um can you create a fly fly is the smallest in uh, creatures right so can you create a fly so allah is checking the ability test a creator to someone who creates things now if you're saying allah is posing the argument that can you create a fly those who denying god so there are many level of challenges there and also in a uh, the, uh, the many challenges uh, also allah talk, tell us that find a, a produce a chapter like it mm. i'm sure you heard this challenge as well yeah, yeah that's, i think that's I think that's the quote that i was referring to earlier when i said you yeah. know if this is if this is you know not from god then you know produce something that like is, it yeah that is is more yeah sort of, sort of magnificent or brilliant or however it would be phrased yeah i i think saying produce something like it uh, looking at the quranic structure and how quran explain the things within the quran itself can you find something like it or, or can you produce something like it and then alfi you can i mean look it up because quran actually uh, uh, quranic challenge has been looked into by many linguistic scholar 
from like 14th century onwards, 1500 years on now. And even the best people to challenge Quran was the Arab in Ali. Because, you know, they were master in poetry. So the challenges was given to the best of the generation. Now, if you look at the current language uh, and, and the current evolvement of Arabic has, it's not in, in the exact form of before in Arabia, in 1400-1500. You know, language evolves, isn't it? Okay. But when we are talking about the Quran, Quran has, has been preserved accurately and exactly how Prophet Muhammad received from Allah. And that shows one of the veracity and, 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 and the strongest compelling proof that yes, indeed it's from God. So take this message seriously. Because you know, Quran often talks about not only challenges, it talks about uh, the faith and the belief and the, the matter of unseen and then what will happen when we die and the question and then we have the heaven and hellfire based on the deeds and actions someone did in this world. So Quran had mentioned that, you know, existential question, like those questions I cannot answer through my aql, which is my reasoning. This question has been answered in the Quran. So overall, uh, it's a book of guidance, but guidance in a way that, you know, we can, we can verify it, whether is it from indeed from God or not. And then if, if evidence leads you to, yes, it is indeed from God, then Alfie, it's your choice, you know. So I mean, so one thing that I was, um, I think I was wondering is, how similar is, is Arabic now and Arabic then in the 7th century in the spoken and the written form? That's why I sometimes wonder is to what extent, how similar is the, the, way, the way that it's written mm -hmm. from the, the right modern day Arabic writing? Yeah, so the, this is a, uh, the Quranic Arabic is different than the normal spoken one. But although, you know, you'll find similar words in the Quran, but what the Quran is addressing in a way that, look, if you look at um, when the Quran came into this um, Arabia, yeah, I wanted to give you a scenario, yeah, and which is the scenario of when Arabia Prophet was leaving at the time, 1500 years ago. Look, one side they have Persia, and other side is Roman Empire, and in between they have this nomadic life. If you have a nomadic life, and if you don't offer something, nobody will come and conquer your land, and if you never conquered, your language never disturbed means never evolved. It keeps the original language. Now look at London. Because of so many cultures together, even language evolves. Like some of the language you use nowadays, it wasn't used in 10, 15 years ago. But Quran is unlike because when Quran revealed, it was a, a, a time where the language is not impacted by the external people. So the actual language or authentic Arabic language was preserved at that time. Now, within that, at that time, there were prophets, uh, uh, poets, master poets, Walid ibn al-Maghira, and many, many famous poets who are master in Arabic language. And their competition was, you know, they used to admire two things, birth of a baby boy and birth of, uh, uh, of a, uh, basically, because, because uh, he will be a poet, they will write. And in the souk with the marketplace, they used to compete one another in in producing poetry like and a they rap yeah 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 kind of yeah kind of yeah yeah so and they used to stick it on the kaaba with the walls of uh, mecca so and that shows that you know the oral tradition of memorization they have a good memory and that oral tradition so when quran came to those same audience they got they got overwhelmed overwhelmed because of richness of the quran because they knew Prophet Muhammad's no way never knew the poetry at all. He was not a poet. So a non-poet to take all of the poet down in, through his uh, uh, revelation, it's something completely blown their mind. So much so, they used to give eavesdrops to his house to listen to the Quran. It's such beautiful. It, it's such uh, amazing 
that it uh, attracts their hearts into listening to the Quran. Is, is, this, is, is it written fully in poetry? Is, is it poetry all, all throughout the Quran? Uh, it's not a poetry uh, and it's not prose, you know. We have 16 types of uh, literacy in Arabic and uh, they call it Bihar and the Quran is none, none like them. If it is like them, someone could say, look, Quran is copied this style. So the Quran, when Quran came, it brings its own unique style and then telling you produce something like it. If, if it is copied from one of the type, they would say it's already been copied. Why do you ask us to uh, imitate the challenge? I've heard, I've heard it said that it's a lot more beautiful in, in Arabic than, Absolutely. In, than in, yeah. in English. And I've, I, I don't read Arabic. And Sh I, and shall, I, we, shall, we, shall we try? Do you want to listen to a few verses? Let me recite it, yeah? Okay, I want, it won't I want, much to me, but I, yeah. I, 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 Arabic uh, because would be a very beautiful language to listen to, even if I won't understand what yeah. you're saying. So let's say, you chose a, a chapter. Tell me any chapter. And uh, it's, it's the, it's Hood, the, yeah. Yes, upward, yeah. yeah. So he's saying here, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, the meaning is, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent, and the most gracious. Alif Lam Ra. Yeah. So these are uh, called uh, disjoint letters, Haruful uh, Mukhtar. So, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, Let's say uh, sorry. Let me yeah. Sorry. Alif Lam Ra. Tilka ayatul kitab al mubin. Sorry, this is Yusuf anyway. It doesn't matter. Inna anzalna hu Quran an Arabi al laalakum taqilun. نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين. Yeah. So this is um, so basically Allah said. It's very pretty. Like, it's very. Yeah. Order, it's very order, you know, it it, it directly attached to the heart. Those who consciously listen to it. Allah said, if you listen to the Quran, Allah said, when the Quran has been recited. Listen to it, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you can receive mercy. But in the, if you believe in it, that's the question. Now Allah is saying, تِلْكَ آيَاتُ الْكِتَابِ الْمُبِينَ These are the verses of the clear book. So Quran, Allah is telling that Quran is a clear book. So it defining one of the attributes of the Quran, which is the clear. So it makes things clear to you. إِنَّ أَنزَلْنَا Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran literally means recitation so that you may understand and address us here to the Arabs and by the extension all the humanity yeah what is Quran so by the Quran comes from Biblia, which is just yeah the Quran actually means something to be recited or something to be read so the book uh, the Quran the term itself something to be recited or something to be read so, so Quran means yeah Quran to, yeah to recite yeah that's recited. why that's why the preservation of the Quran it's also memorized through memorization because the method is recitation that's why uh, the method of preservation is uh, uh, recitation right and now he's talking about the joseph story here and allah revealed the story of joseph here is this the one with the cloak with the multicolored cloak is there, there are a couple josephs in the bible is this is this one of them no this is the son of israel which is the yaqub jacob jacob oh, son oh, oh. jacob son and you know they have uh, 12 tribes Ah. And this is where, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, from the Joseph progeny, uh, from the Judah, uh, uh, Judaism start and then, you know, Islam, we believe Adam is the first man and first prophet. He was the Muslim, someone submitted to God. So Quran, you see uh, Quranic beauty in terms of how it appealed to the human mind, in terms of its language, in terms of its veracity in terms of its intellectual engagement like it, i'm not sure have you read to the translation no i was actually given a quran uh, yes. last time i came here in fact yeah. um uh yeah so i no i haven't read it. i mean there's there's other things i i, 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 I want to ask you yeah I read a few lines yeah here and i want i want your take on this yeah 
Let's say this is called Aljasia, yeah? Let's, let's read this six line. What, what do you think? In the uh, uh, the this is the sort of royal way. And yeah, royal plural. Yeah, yeah. So it's not necessarily, you know, that yeah. Trinitarian understanding that. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Sorry, yeah. 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 The God's revelation is inside to you as prophet in truth. So what message will they leave? You're not the divine God revelations. Yeah, so what was your take so far? You know, there's quite, I mean, there are few statements actually making here. Allah made yeah, it. Yeah, they're saying, I mean, I remember re uh, reading, uh, it was by Seneca. Oh yeah, is there something about leaving the Quran out in the rain? Because uh, I know you're not, you're not supposed to leave it on the floor. Uh, is there something, like if it gets rained, if it gets rained on, is that also uh, sacrilegious? Or, or is that not a problem? Uh, do you mean leaving the Quran itself in the rain or? Well, I was just saying, uh, when it started to rain, you closed the book and I was wondering if that was you trying to like protect it from getting damp. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, out of respect. Yeah, yeah. this is not like, uh, yeah, out of respect yeah. because we don't want to make it wet. So Quran here, Allah's talking about the rain. Yeah, rain uh, Allah used for many different reasons. One of the things Allah saying, when I send, send rain and you can see the dead dead come out of life means when you see a debris uh, dead land you know and when the rain comes you you see plants started growing and this is an example Allah is telling look at outside of you you can see the resurrection in your own eyes so Allah is saying this is an example just like you witness your own example like for example Allah is telling that you were non-existent in one point of time and I bring you into existence. So once you die, you will be disintegrated. You will be nowhere in the scene of the universe, but God will resurrect you back the same way that he brings you in in first place. So this, these existential question reasonably explain into the mind of the human being so that you can engage. That's why we say in the first premise, the aql and naql, which is the reason and revelation go hand in hand together. So I mean, Going the um, the Quran, and you were talking about the details yeah. of of how how it came about, and uh, and and how the the prophet, you know, no. well, what what he was like and what he did or didn't do, could or couldn't do, and and people coming to his house to listen to it. Mm. Is that all in the Hadith? Yeah, that, that is in the Hadith, and and also in the Quran. Also in the Quran, that Allah said. Uh, that you, O Prophet, and with your companion, you stand in half of the night or one third of the night with your companion reciting the Quran and doing prayer. So the idea of Quran's practice is mentioned in the Quran. And Allah, Allah saying, you know, Allah constantly saying, uh, this is a book of guidance. Uh, recite Quran with best of tartil, uh, uh, which is attention, sincerity, and all of these things, you know. So, yes, it's totally uh, clearly explained in the Quran as well and, and the hadith. Hadith, of course, go back to the story of how each companion's situation when they heard. And some of them got shocked. Some of them got shocked. And they said, uh, 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 "This is not a mahada um, uh, bashar. Uh, this is not a, a word of a human uh, being, you know." So that, that shows that even though they are the master of this language, yet is so profound that it cannot be reasonably uh, challenged in a sense that they are completely unaware where did it come from. And that's why they started to telling prophet uh, madman because the moment you cannot refute objectively you can give those activity oh he's crazy he's deluded and allah constantly refute those ideas when they told him he's deluded 
and Allah saying, no, he's not deluded. Your companion, Prophet Muhammad, was not a deluded person. So when he was telling, he was a majnoon, Allah also reputed, he was not a majnoon. Then they were said, he is a shah, uh, which is the po uh, uh, a poet. And Allah saying, he's not a poet. Mm. So, see, I mean, it's... Um I find there's an interesting comparison uh, or parallel yeah. between uh, you know, between how <laughs> in uh, oh my in, goodness the rain is quite heavy now right Alfie yeah, yeah in I the, think in the hadith yeah. they uh, they seem to have said that he was uh, that he was illiterate yeah and uh, and one of at least one of the early church fathers said that about Jesus that he that he was not literate that. Uh, uh, this is in response to um, a sort of pagan critic who had said, yeah, who had said like, oh, well, these things that Jesus is saying, these are similar to what Greek philosophers have said. Yeah. So he, he could have gotten this from them. Yeah. They said, oh, well, he's illiterate, so he couldn't have read yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so this is in the Quran as well. In chapter 29, uh, 48 onwards, uh, Allah mentioned, that neither you know or, uh, you know, you basically, Allah paraphrase, I'm paraphrasing it. So Allah is saying that, you are not literate basically you don't know how to read or write so that you know people would have doubted you you see so i think let's close it it's quite yeah. heavy now yeah i think this is Allah we'll, we'll catch up next like, shall we continue next time. week it was a yeah yeah if, if, if i'm yeah, if i uh, if you are around then we can continue yeah, yeah. it was nice talking to you Alfie. what's your name again aziz aziz uh, it's yeah. nice to catch up with you yeah, yeah. thank you Alfie. i was considering when i was don't finish, 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 finish. Leave, and i thought well